Greetings, fellow Gorehounds. So while it's true the Writers Guild have reached a tentative agreement and will most likely be ending their strike soon, SAG-AFTRA, the Actors Guild, is still currently on strike, so I'm going to include a link to them and to the Entertainment Fund in the description below so that you can help them out more directly. And as I've been saying a lot lately, f*** the corporates, support the unions, and uh, let's get to this review. Greetings, fellow gorehounds, and welcome back to a blood splattered vlog. I'm the horror guru. And I'm Gout Jacula. And today we're going to talk about Amulet, a British horror film by Romula Gari, a filmmaker who's apparently incredibly prolific, but this is the first movie of hers. I've seen. So I have no commentary on her other movies. But I can say that I did enjoy this movie. Yes, this movie is very good. It is about a uh, former soldier. We're not sure what ethnicity is. He seems to be Slavic. Yeah, he's got like almost like a Russian style accent. Yeah, yeah, but the movie is set in England. Yep. And he's a homeless vet who has a severe case of PTSD and is working as a day laborer yeah. when he has the chance. And he is taken in by this nun who seems to take pity on him, tries to help him out by giving him this job as essentially a repairman on this house. Yeah, the hand, like a handyman on a house that this young lady is staying in. And the young lady is staying there because she has to take care of her invalid mother who lives in the attic. Yes. Now, one thing's <clears throat> very clear about this movie from the get-go. The nun is sus as fuck. The lady he's helping is sus as fuck. And the invalid mother upstairs is the sussiest of the susses. Yeah. And so most of this movie is this character trying to figure out what sort of weirdness is happening around him. And more importantly, why they all chose him. <laughs> yeah. And like, what's the thing that he did that caused his PTSD? Yes, because the PTSD is left a mystery because we're constantly cutting back to his past and we're getting flashbacks, but it's not until towards the end of the movie you find the actual source of the PTSD itself. Yeah. So that's the setup for this movie, but nothing will prepare you for where this movie goes. <laughs> and unfortunately, most of that is spoiler territory. Yeah. All kinds of weird shit happens to this guy. He finds like, like a, a mutant rat thing, thing in the toilet at one mm -hmm. point. The girl is very weird around him. She's clearly very sheltered. Yeah. But at the same time, she herself seems to have some sort of agenda. She on the surface has this kind of like old school woman who grew up with old values and takes care of the house and does all the womanly things yeah. kind of thing going on. But there's also like a resentment underneath it all for this guy very early on that turns into like a childish crush. Yeah. And the shift of that does not feel natural. It feels very weird and off-putting. Yeah, yeah, it feels very strange. And, and he doesn't know how to feel about it. And he starts to like crush on her as the story goes on, but not until he like gets over that initial what the fuck. But something that's very clear is that he's not allowed upstairs to see the invalid mother. And anytime you have like a locked thing in a room and there's like weird noises and banging and screaming and screeches you're not sure if we're even dealing with like an actual mother anymore if there's like a creature up there yeah no what are you talking about man if someone's locked up in the attic there's nothing but <laughs> candy and flowers like it's I, always candy and flowers there's never anything bad locked in the attic like it reminds me a little bit of um the dunwich horror. dunwich horror yeah there's like a dunwich horror element to this movie and you're not quite sure which direction it's gonna go. It's weird. This is like the second movie in a row that I watched this week where I'm like, is it vampires? Are we dealing with yeah, vampires? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you see this like mutant rat bat thing, you're like, oh, it's vampires. And like all the windows yeah. have like newspaper over them to block out the sunlight. So you're like vampires. What's going on? And whether or not it's vampires or not, we'll talk about in the spoiler section. Cause again, the actual answers are spoilers. Yeah. But it is something you're thinking in the back of your head through most of this movie. Yeah, it's one of the possibilities you come up with. Now there actually is like a full on twist by the end of it that flips the entire movie on its head and makes you look back on the rest of the movie from a completely different perspective. But, but again, again, it's a spoiler. spoiler. 
I will say this though, it is a slow burn. It's one of those movies that I don't recommend watching if you're a little sleepy, you might start passing out. Yeah. Because it's a lot of talking. Yeah, and one of the things that you're gonna be asking throughout a lot of the movie is why is it called The Ambulate? Yes, really early on, like he digs up this thing that I think is an amulet. Yeah, it's yeah, it's the amulet. Yeah, you know, it's but you're not quite amulet. sure what exactly. Yeah, it is. how it fits in with everything yeah. else that's going on. And that's yeah. like a thing from like his flashback, right? So how does that tie into anything happening in the present? <laughs> yeah, it's a real question. But like when we say this character has severe PTSD, let me put it this way: he ties himself up before he goes to bed so he doesn't wake up violently. <laughs> Yeah. Because he has a habit of doing that. And we even see what happens when he's not tied up and he wakes up from his nightmares and it's 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 violent. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not good. It's night terrors, you know? Yeah. This is the third movie we've talked about in a row that has this feminist element to it. But what that element is won't be clear until the end of the movie. Yeah. And you're going to be wondering, since I said that while you watch this movie, and I, I, I get it because for the first two thirds of this movie, you're going to be like, what the fuck does feminism have to do with anything? Yeah. Hey, Hang on, the movie- Yeah, hold in there. Again, completely different perspective when you get to the end of the movie, but really well done. Yeah. I promise we didn't plan these three movies in a row. They just happened to be the three movies that we watched. Yeah, they uh, just all had this same theme. They all had this kind of same thematic element, or at least this through line among them. We're gonna try to watch something a little different in our next vlog, I promise. Yeah, but they all have this confrontation with the feminine yeah. aspect. They do, they do. And for most most of this movie, it's him and the like really traditional submissive daughter of the of the invalid. of the mother, yeah. But like there, like again, there's like a resentment underneath it. That, yeah, that she doesn't hide at the beginning, and then towards the middle of the movie, it shifts into something completely different. And you're like, wait, what happened here? Yeah, yeah, that all that's answered. It's all, all answered. That is answered. I will say this: unlike the last two movies we watched, I don't know if I would call this movie art house. Oh, but, I would. Well, like the other two movies, Perpetrator and A Wounded Fawn, all have like art house stylings. Yeah, like, it wore on its sleeve, like, right up front. There's like a you. surrealism, a dream logic going on in those movies. This movie is a little bit more gritty and grounded to a point. Yeah, up up until. Up until a point. Yeah. When shit starts to hit the fan, it, it does, does get, get wacky. wacky. But for most of this movie, it feels like a, even though it's not set in a period, it feels like a period talky drama. Yeah. For like a good two thirds of the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you didn't know that it was a horror movie and that something supernatural was gonna yeah. happen, it could be like a What's Eating Gilbert great yeah. type of drama. Now it's not set in a period. But the old fashionedness of the lady makes it feel like you're in a period yeah. piece. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Post production guru here. I finally found the word for what I was trying to say at this point in the vlog gothic horror. This is a gothic horror movie. But you don't really realize that's what it is at first, but that's totally what it's going for. And with that said, let's get back to the vlog. I'm actually not sure what streaming platforms this is on. Th this is on Hulu and to rent from Amazon. All right, it's on Hulu and to rent from Amazon. That's where we watched it. Okay, yep. rock on. So go check it out there. I highly recommend this movie. It is really good. If you can take a slow burn movie with a feminist twist, like a literal feminist twist about a uh, veteran dealing with a Dunwich horror-esque situation, then uh, I think you will dig this movie. Yeah. And with that, said, let us move on to the spoilers so we can answer what the fuck is going on with Gilbrett Grape, whatever you want to call the lady upstairs. <laughs> Okay, so here it is. I'm just gonna lay it out for you, all right? You wanna know what the fuck is going on with this movie? So it turns out that the mother upstairs, she's not her mother. She's not even a she. She, she is, is a man. man who owned the house previously and murdered his wife and tried to sleep with his daughter. He is being punished by having this evil entity put inside him. And this entity is being watched over by this nun, who's not actually a nun, but is a person who has been watching over this entity for a long time and uses this entity to punish evil men or men who have done evil who need to be punished. Yeah. And what this demon does to you when it enters you is it basically makes you give birth to evil. First, it makes you into a woman. Yeah. 
Uh, kind of. <laughs> yeah. So the idea is you are a man who's wronged women and now you're being turned into a woman and having to experience the pain of childbirth over and over, over and, and over. over again. Yeah. Eternal punishment. <laughs> At least until the entity uses you all up and they move on to a new Yeah, yeah. Host. And then you you die and then they, they put it in something else. It turns out that the um, main character is being groomed to be the next host, but he doesn't realize that. He's being tricked by these two into doing this. He's tricked into killing the fucking former host yeah. and taking in the evil himself. And he's tricked into getting the girl to be his familiar and to watch over him. But really, she's his jailer. Yeah. <laughs> she's the one making sure that he serves out his sentence. And I bet you're wondering, why? Why, Why him? him? What, what is going on? He's a war vet. He's homeless. Hasn't he suffered enough? enough. Yeah. Well, here's why. Because it turns out when he was a soldier, first off, he didn't see any action. He was just a crossing guard. He watched over this one road. Yeah, this one checkpoint mm -hmm. that like nobody goes down. Exactly. And he ends up taking in this one woman who the implication is she's from the other side. Well, she's not like an enemy combatant, but she's like a civilian on the other yeah, side. She's yeah, she's a civilian from the enemy yeah, side. area. And at first he takes her in, he feeds her, and he seems like he's gonna take care of her. But then when she tries to leave because she's got a daughter on the other side that she's trying to get to and a husband somewhere she's trying to get to, uh, he, he beats, beats and rapes her. her. Yeah. Because he does not want to be alone. He does not want her to leave and he punishes her for wanting to leave him. Yeah. So actually, <laughs> what happens at the end of this movie is him getting his just desserts for being a rapist. And the PTSD he's suffering is his guilt. He did this to this woman. How could he live with himself? Yeah. Well, guess what? This nun, this non-nun, and this lady have given him a way to live with himself. And that is to give birth to this evil fucking bat creature over and over, and over, and over again. again. Yeah. I was actually a little sad that the little bat creatures didn't take off the skate. I know, that would have been you amazing. You know, would have been like, go, go little bat. Now I bet you- Because it was, it was, I thought it was kind of adorable. And I bet you're wondering, what the fuck is with the amulet. The amulet that he digs up at the beginning, he explains is like a thing to ward off evil, right? It's like, it represents a goddess. Yeah, it represents an unnamed goddess. Yeah, so that girl who uh, becomes his caretaker turns into that goddess that looks exactly like the amulet. After everything has hit the fan, he's killed the demon, he's found out the demon is a man. She, he enters and, the Jodorowsky, man. Yeah, yeah, he enters the Jodorowsky. <laughs> he opens a door and there's a giant snail shell that he crawls into. This is the moment where the very grounded and gritty supernatural movie turns into a surreal one. Yeah. In the last like fucking 20 minutes. Yeah. And he crawls through and as he gets to the end, there's the goddess in the form of the amulet and the girl. Yeah. And she is like a tentacle squid thing. Now you will know what it feels like to be a woman. Woman. And experience you know? the pains of womanhood. Good. I will never leave you. Don't you find me beautiful. <laughs> ah! You know. But that's not the actual end of the that's movie. The, yeah, it's not even the end of the movie. <laughs> the end of the movie is actually the caretaker lady, now back in human form, Yeah, driving off to this gas station where she finds his victim. Yeah. The implication is she's kind of checking in on the victim, seeing how yeah, she's Yeah, yeah, seeing how things are going. And she has yeah. been reunited with her daughter, which is great. The woman talks about the war being over and how we all have to move on and get over it and all that stuff, forgive and whatever. Forgive and forget. And the guy, and, yeah. and, she, and the woman just like responds with, never forgive, never forget. Get. And like sets the amulet down and then walks off. And then like it's revealed that he's in the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a movie that has a Just Desserts, almost Tales from the Crypt style ending but you don't realize the character's a piece of shit until the end. Yeah, you don't realize what he's done You until spend the end. Most, of this, most of this movie empathizing with him and his confusion and his horror at what's happening around him until you reach those revelations. Yeah. And then the entire movie twists on its head. And then you gotta go back and rewatch the movie from the beginning and realize the hints were there. Yeah, 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 they're, they're the, all there. It's a good movie. I like this movie a lot. Oh God, the image of her as that like fucking squid sperm tentacle goddess. Oh my God. <laughs> Watch this movie for that scene alone. <laughs> I'm gonna put a little still here of it. All right, there you go. Watch the movie for that image alone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. Anyway, my fellow Gorehounds, I'm starting to lose my voice after recording these three vlogs. So where can they find you, Count Jacula? Oh, you can find me on YouTube 
at the Count Dracula Show, you should totally subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you will be notified when I live stream, which is usually between 7 p.m., 9 p.m. PST. You can also follow me on X Twitter, Counting Jack. Follow me on TikTok at Real Count Dracula. How about you? Y'all know me, I'm the Horror Guru. You can find me at the Horror Guru on Twitter, on Twitch, on Instagram, Blue Sky, Facebook, all that shit. You can find me there. Just look up the Horror Guru or Blood Splattered Cinema and I'll be there. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and don't forget to ring that notification bell. Don't forget to ring that notification bell. And if you'd like to help out either of us more directly, be sure to check out our Patreon pages. And remember, if you decide to go the Patreon route, even a dollar a month can go a long way, but we will certainly accept more. And my fellow Gorehounds, if you made it this far into the vlog, then I want you to comment below and be sure to comment below using the hashtag ToiletBat. Peace out and we'll catch y'all later. Yeah.